a shield that thinks for itself. This is Israel's new reality. For years, the world knew the Iron Dome. It was the system that protected Israeli towns from rockets. It was a miracle of defense. But the threats changed. Now, Israel has built its answer. This is not just an update. It is a completely new kind of protection. We are going to see how it works, why it was needed, and what it means for the future of war. This is the story of Israel's next generation shield. To understand why Israel had to build this new system, you must first understand the old one. The original Iron Dome saved countless lives. For over a decade, it was Israel's guardian against short-range rockets. Its success rate was astonishing, stomping over 90% of the threats it engaged. When a siren wailed, people knew this system was their best hope. It became a symbol of Israeli resilience and technological skill. But an enemy adapts. The groups firing rockets at Israel learned. They saw the Iron Dome's strength, so they looked for its weaknesses. They began building new weapons. They started using drones, small, cheap, and flying low. They acquired cruise missiles, which are faster and smarter than simple rockets. They built larger rockets with more range and power. The old Iron Dome was designed for a different time. It was like a brilliant doctor trained to cure one disease, suddenly faced with a dozen new viruses. Israel's defense experts saw this coming. They knew the next war would be more complex. They had to build a system that could fight a multi-headed monster. So Israel went back to the drawing board. The result is what we can call the next generation. This new system is smarter, faster, and tougher in every single way. It is a layered network, not just a single tool. Let's break down the three biggest changes. First, the missiles themselves are new and improved. They have a much longer range. Think of it like this. If a threat is flying toward a city, you want to stop it as far away as possible. The further out you can hit it, the safer everyone is. This longer reach pushes the battle away from homes and schools. It gives the system more time to react and more chances to succeed. It creates a bigger safety bubble over Israel. But the second change is the most dramatic. It is the new weapon that changes the rules of the game. Israel has added a laser. This laser is called the Iron Beam. The Iron Beam laser solves a huge problem. The problem of cost. The old interceptor missiles were effective, but each one was very expensive. Imagine having to fire a missile that cost $50,000 to stop a homemade rocket that cost $500 to build. An enemy could simply launch thousands of cheap rockets, hoping to make Israel run out of money. It is a strategy of exhaustion. The laser ends that strategy. It does not fire a physical missile. It uses electricity to create a powerful beam of light. Once the system is built, the cost per shot is almost nothing. You can fire it again and again without going bankrupt. It is the perfect defense against cheap, simple threats. How does it work? It is incredibly precise. The system aims the laser at a rocket or a drone. The beam focuses intense heat on a small spot. The target gets so hot, so fast, that it cracks apart or melts. It falls from the sky as pieces of scrap metal. It is silent, instant, and it strikes at the speed of light. There is no warning and no escape. This laser is perfect for handling swarms of drones or volleys of cheap rockets. It saves the more expensive missiles for the big, dangerous targets like precision-guided cruise missiles. It's like having a team where one person handles all the small tasks efficiently so the experts can focus on the major crises. But this creates a new question. With all of these weapons, missiles, and lasers, 
How does the system decide what to do? How does it know which threat is the most dangerous? This is the heart of the new system. This is its brain. The brain is an artificial intelligence, an AI. This is not a simple computer. It is a system that can think and make decisions in microseconds. Imagine a real attack. The radar detects 20 incoming objects, 15 cheap rockets, 4 drones, and 1 advanced missile. Instantly, all this information floods the command center. The AI doesn't freeze. It analyzes. It looks at every object. It calculates its speed, its path, and its size. It predicts where it will land. It can even guess what kind of weapon it is. Then it makes a choice. A cold, logical, and life-saving choice. It knows the advanced missile is the biggest threat. It assigns one of the expensive interceptor missiles to destroy it. At the same time, it sees the 15 rockets and 4 drones. It notices that 10 of the rockets are headed toward empty land, but 5 are aimed at a town. It instantly commands the laser to take down the 5 rockets headed for the town. The laser spins, fires, and destroys them one by one in seconds. The drones are eliminated just as quickly. This AI is the commander. It manages the entire battle without panic. It makes sure the right weapon is used for the right target. It is the first true AI guardian of a nation's skies. Of course, no system is perfect. There are always challenges. The biggest fear is a saturation attack. This is when an enemy fires hundreds of weapons all at the same moment. The system is fast, but it's still limited by physics. It only has so many launchers and lasers. A huge coordinated wave could potentially get through. Weather is also a factor. Heavy rain, fog, or dust can weaken the laser beam as it travels through the air. The engineers in Israel are working on solutions, but for now, it is a known weakness. And this is a complex machine. It needs highly trained people to maintain it and operate it. Its strength depends on the humans behind it. So where does this new Israeli shield fit in the bigger picture? It doesn't work alone. It's one vital layer in Israel's multi-layered defense strategy. Think of it like a castle. You have an outer wall, an inner wall, and the soldiers inside the keep. Each layer provides a different type of protection. This new system is the inner wall, protecting against short to medium range threats. For threats that are farther away, like big ballistic missiles, Israel has other systems like the arrow missile, designed to hit them high in the sky, far from home. All these systems are connected. They talk to each other. They share information. If one layer misses, the next one is ready to try. This layered defense is the only way to create a complete shield. It ensures that if an enemy gets through one door, there is always another door locked behind it. Looking to the future, the work for Israel's engineers is never done. The race between the attack and the defense never ends. Right now, they are already planning for the next generation of threats. They are looking at hypersonic missiles that fly faster than sound and stealth drones that are nearly invisible to radar. The research is focused on making the laser stronger and able to work in any weather. They are working on making the AI even smarter, perhaps giving it the ability to learn from every attack and become better for the next one. The goal is a seamless, intelligent web of protection that can defend Israel from any aerial danger. In the end, this new system is more than just new technology. It represents a new idea. The future of defense is not about building a bigger wall. It's about building a smarter shield. It combines the power of missiles with the speed of light, all guided by a digital brain. It shows that in the modern world, the best defense is intelligence. This is Israel's new guardian, a shield that learns, adapts, and strikes at the speed of light. It's the next step in the endless mission to protect a nation. If this look into the future of defense was interesting, please support our channel. 
Give this video a like and subscribe to Winds of Thought for more stories about the technology changing our world. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think is the biggest challenge in protecting our cities tomorrow? Thank you for watching.